Hey guys, Dr. Alex the Punch Doctor here, and welcome to the Kinetic Integrated Mechanics reference video. You've probably noticed that there's a big difference between how people teach punch mechanics in gyms or on YouTube, and how natural punchers and great boxers actually punch. In this video, I'm gonna show you the mechanics that natural punchers use, where the power comes from, how big punchers generate it, and a way you can learn how to do it too. I'm gonna go over the concepts I've discussed in the past with some more detail, including the stretch shortening cycle, kinetic chains, and the four punch phases. And I'm also gonna talk about a few things that I haven't talked about before. I wanted to put everything in here in one place so I don't have to go over it in every new video that I make. Before I get to the concepts, I wanna to touch on the big problem in the community, and that's poor instruction. None of the boxing gyms I've been to have a system in place to really teach newcomers punch mechanics. They just tell you to go hit the bag or hit the mitts. Most other sports will teach you mechanics. Think baseball, golf, there's pitching coaches, batting coaches, and swing coaches. In boxing, there are no standardized systems in place to actually teach you the mechanics from the ground up. You're often left to your own devices to figure out how to punch, or worse, you get kids with little experience in the sport and almost no knowledge of anatomy or biomechanics teaching other kids with wrong instruction. If you do get some instruction in the gym or on YouTube, the way they teach you to punch is not how natural or talented boxers punch. The very mechanics they're teaching you cause you to lack power because the mechanics are counter to how the body naturally moves. They teach the wrong mechanics, and then since they're wrong mechanics don't generate power, they say you can't teach punching power. This creates ideas like natural punches are born with power, or punches are born not made, because the coach or trainer doesn't know how or what to teach. My channel, website, and program aim to correct this and teach the natural type of mechanics you actually see successful boxers use. Before we get to the four punch phases and the kinetic chains involved, we need to talk about the stretch shortening cycle. Most, if not virtually all athletic movements are powered by the stretch shortening cycle. The stretch shortening cycle is a cycle of quick stretch followed by a rapid contraction. You can see this phenomenon at work when someone dips down before they jump or bounces the weight in the weight room. The stretch shortening cycle takes advantage of muscle elasticity by loading elastic energy into the muscle with a quick stretch, then releasing this energy with a rapid contraction. Athletes can elicit a stronger, more emphatic or violent contraction in their muscles after a quick stretch. You can take advantage of this phenomenon in a punch in three specific areas. The primary section is in the hips to create hip rotation. The secondary section is in the muscles between the hips and the torso to create torso rotation. And the third or tertiary section is in the muscles between the torso and the arm and then in the arm itself. You may have heard the word kinetic chain. A kinetic chain is a chain of muscles that runs through the body connected with fascia. It's not a singular chain, as some people say. There are multiple chains. In order to power a strong punch, we want to elicit the stretch shortening cycle from the ground up in these chains. The first two chains I want to talk about are in the legs. They include the superficial back line and the superficial front line. The back line is commonly referred to as the posterior chain. Doing good mornings will give you a good feel for this chain. The superficial front line contains the quads primarily. The role of these chains is to get you to power the hips into rotation and create torque or rotational force. The next chains are the spiral lines and the front functional line that you see here. The spiral line includes the internal oblique on the side of the hip moving back, the external oblique of the hip moving forward, and the serratus anterior that connects the external oblique to the shoulder blade. The front functional line includes the abs and pec which crosses the shoulder joint. You can feel these crossbody chains if you do a barbell punch in the gym. Let the barbell come down and compress your tissues while you keep your hips pointing forward. Don't let that weight coming down cause your hips to collapse. Let the weight come down and stretch those chains before you push the barbell back. The arm lines connect the pec to the arm and also cross the shoulder joint. When the arm chains get going, they'll move the arm in an arc to maintain tension in the arm line relative to the torso. Moving the arm in an arc, even a slight arc, allows the arm to maintain tension in the chain. 
If you throw a punch in a straight line or try to muscle a punch rather than throw it, there are fewer muscles involved and there won't be tension through the entire kinetic chain to maximize stability at impact for your weight transfer and follow through. To summarize, and as a rough example for the time being, the leg muscles push the hips into rotation, which stretches the secondary cross body chains, which then contract to contribute a stretch shortening cycle to the tertiary arm lines. So for example, you have a stretch shortening cycle in the legs through loading the tissues through movement or a lowering of your center of gravity. Then you contract those muscles to rotate the hips, which elicits a stretch shortening cycle in the cross body chains, which then elicits a stretch shortening cycle in the arm. Let's talk about the four phases now. The four phases are load, explode, accelerate, and follow through. Load. Load phase is a loading of elastic muscle energy into your chains. You can do this through movement or by lowering your center of gravity. Depending on the scenario, you can load just the legs or you can load the cross body chains as well. For example, when you throw your right hand, you're rotating your body counter to the rotation of a hook, which automatically is gonna stretch your cross body chains. So you're punching with the right hand, right? Turning your body and that's stretching the same chains you'll use in the hook. You can use that rotation as the stretch to contract off of when you follow up then with the hook. Explode is a rapid contraction of these quickly stretched muscles to release the stored elastic muscle energy. The explode phase is designed to create stretch between the hips and the cross body chains. The explode phase can also increase the stretch between the torso and the arm. It's important to note that in the explode phase, you're utilizing the leg muscles to power the hips into rotation. For example, with a straight punch, you're utilizing the posterior chain to push one side of the hip forward while your quad stabilize the other side. The point is you don't have to try to squish a bug or grip the floor with your toes. These overused sayings paint an incorrect picture of the mechanics. It's very simple. You simply push off of your foot and close your hips for the rear punches, or you push off of a flat foot to power the hook. Jab is a little different as you're pushing your rear hip back and moving laterally back to front. Stop trying to squish the bug or grip the floor, which you can't really do anyway. You have enough grip just with gravity pushing your body into the ground. These sayings are vestiges of the old linear mechanics and you aren't going to do that anymore. That's old tech. This is the new tech. Accelerate is an acceleration of the crossbody chains and arm. At this point, the torso passes the hips in their rotation and the arm passes the torso. The torso catches up with the hips with the initial contraction, then passes the hips as the muscles contract through their full range of motion. I wanna make it clear that the body accelerates relative to the hips. The hips move first and the torso lags behind, but only for a split second. Once that stretch takes place, the body and the torso start to contract and then move with the hips, eventually passing the hips when the hips stop, and same with the arm. Additionally, the shoulder and the hip do not move in a one-to-one -one linear ratio. They move together for a period of time. However, the shoulder and torso will pass the hips as the hips reach the end of their range of motion. If you want to generate power, it's vital to have independent movement between the hips and the torso. If you focus on moving the shoulder and hip in a one-to-one -one ratio with the linear mechanics, you may be able to elicit one stretch shortening cycle in the shoulder at best to power your punch. However, you're missing out on the huge stretch shortening cycle in the cross body chains and these larger muscles to power your punch. Whenever I see the linear robotic one-to-one -one ratio mechanics, I almost never see a stretch shortening cycle. They're simply pushing the punch. It's vital to have the hips and torso be able to move independently from each other. One thing you can do to feel this is to rotate your body from side to side with a broomstick on your shoulders. Turn your body from side to side, but use your glutes to keep your hips pointing forward as you turn. As you gain momentum turning to one side, use your glutes to push your hips in the opposite direction at the last second. Eliciting the stretch shortening cycle in the torso is a huge aspect of these mechanics. Including the hip and torso stretch shortening cycle is a multiplicative or even exponential increase in power compared to the traditional linear mechanics frequently taught. If you pivot with your foot and tighten your core and brace the entire time you're moving your torso, you're not going to be able to elicit the stretch shortening cycle in the torso. 
You need to stay relaxed during the punch until impact where you grab your fist and transfer your weight into and through your target using the tension you've built in your kinetic chains. When I say carry the tension, it's similar to how you'd have tension in your chains, in your body, in your arm, when you're throwing a ball or swinging a tennis racket. It's that sort of tension. And when you hit your target, your body will stabilize itself with those chains at impact. To get a sense of what that feels like, you can go lean against the wall with your arm and you'll feel all those chains necessarily be active to hold yourself in that position. And that's essentially what it feels like when you make impact. Follow through. Impact and follow through have two components, amplitude and amount of weight transferred. Once you get the mechanics down, you can modulate the power by managing the amount of weight you transfer and how far you transfer it through your target, also known as amplitude. These mechanics will make you faster. We're using the stretch shortening cycle, which will increase the speed at every section. This ballistic style cascade of stretch shortening cycles will significantly increase your speed once you get the mechanics down. Not only will these mechanics add speed and power to your punches, you'll also have increased leverage in virtually every position. These mechanics allow you to potentially throw with effortless power and leverage from any orthodox or unorthodox position and will add offensive capability to defensive moves like head movement. To summarize, instead of pivoting and having a linear relationship between the hip and the shoulder and pushing the punch or maybe eliciting one stretch shortening cycle in the shoulder at best, the way I show you how to do it utilizes a rapid stretch shortening cycle in the legs to power the hips into rotation, which creates a cascade of secondary and tertiary stretch shortening cycles in the torso and the arm. This creates an explosive cascade of acceleration and allows you to land with tension in the entire chain to utilize your entire body in the punch. Since you're using the stretch shortening cycle to power the punch, you will be faster and you'll be able to land with more power and weight at impact that you can modulate with how much weight you transfer and how far you transfer it. Bottom line, you are being misled by the huge majority of boxing trainers and are being taught mechanics that almost no successful pro actually uses. I urge you, take a look for yourself. Look at the mechanics that the top pros use and then compare it to most of the instruction you see on YouTube and the web. The difference will be very clear. All right, this was probably a lot of new information for you and you might be feeling somewhat confused and that's okay. You may wanna watch this a couple more times to really grasp the concepts. You might be able to figure out how to do this stuff yourself as I did. However, if you want some help, I've created a complete A to Z program that will retrain your muscle memory to use all these concepts and mechanics in your punches. It's called the Power Punching Blueprint. The Power Punching Blueprint is very simple and non-complicated. I know I got pretty in-depth and perhaps complex with my explanation here. However, you don't really need to know any of that stuff, even the anatomy, for my program to work for you. I have it all laid out in a step-by-step -step training program. As long as you go through the program and practice the drills at every phase, you will adopt the new mechanics almost automatically. It'll work for almost everybody. If you can throw a ball, you can use these mechanics. If you ever have any questions, I'm in the Discord a lot to help out, and I'm always around to offer guidance and answer questions. If you're interested in the Power Punching Blueprint, you can buy it today at howtopunchharder.com. That's about it for now. I just wanted to make this reference video so I don't have to repeat myself in every video. So ultimately it'll make, allow me to make more content for you guys. That's it for now. Thanks a lot. And I'll see you in the next video.